Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. It is just under two minutes until this fantastic live stream is gonna be in your eyes and in your ears. And I promise you, because all the content we do is really good, that it is going to be absolutely worth the wait. We are just now checking our microphone levels, making sure the internet's okay and it's not gonna go kaboom on us at any point we've got the new compressors for the audio so we're not spiking and not hurting your ears in the meantime you can of course check out this incredible piece of red men tv merch that we designed um i think you'll agree it's absolutely brilliant obviously i recorded this ages ago so it could be literally anything but i'm sure it's absolutely fantastic uh, and of course don't forget as well we've got our own streaming platform that is red men plus red men plus is the home of red men tv and has absolutely everything we do there from in-depth documentary series to more relaxed podcast stuff like we do on the main channel uh, on youtube so yeah it's not going to be long now it's around about 50 seconds at this point uh, peek behind the curtain what is normally happening um is we're all panicking i normally need a piss to be quite honest with you at this point and then have to run off uh, and, and tom's normally sat in the room going what's he doing i've got no idea where's he gone and it's always for a wee because i've got a really small bladder and i can only last about 40 minutes normally which is hell when you go and watch a liverpool game because they're 45 minutes off especially when you have a pint but it is what it is and we live where we live and we've got to deal with what we've got to deal with and i promise you that this content is coming up in less than 11 seconds time and yeah it's nine it's eight it's seven it's six it's five it's four it's three it's two it's one it's your content Hello everyone, it is the Red Men Originals podcast and it is my absolute pleasure um, to spend the vast majority of the next hour, 90 minutes, talking about Liverpool beating Man United um, alongside Steve, Hall, Steve Plunkett and Dan Club, um, particularly Steve Plunkett who was unceremoniously <laughs> booted off the final word show this morning. Sorry, I, was, I what happened was I thought I hadn't booked a second guest and then I forgot I'd texted Sam, so Steve was sat in ready to go and then Sam turned up so Steve took the took the hit but in fairness I think it's worked out well because having both on this show together having just done that together mm. might not have worked so I think I don't need my check and everything mate you would live I was there tantalizingly close took one for the team Sam, Sam Walker well done mate yeah you'll get well you'll get more uh, more people listening to this one I think or if you're watching it at least yeah. so you, you, you we put What's you on the, the main one yeah, yeah, who cares really not much happens only the best final word ever <laughs> yeah, yeah. but never mind <laughs> yeah Yes. Anyway, it was good stuff ultimately. Uh, all is well that ends well. We're here. We've got a fresh cast of people to talk about this game. We're all very, very excited. Uh the kickoff question. It's a it's a slightly different approach to it this time around. Uh Steve O'Hare, one of our club legend subscribers, has, has asked us to finish the sentence. Beating Man United 7 0 feels like Thankful. Just perfection. I'll give you the whole sentence. Oh, beating Manchester United 7-0 feels like perfection. Beating Man United 7-0 feels like as fucking good as it gets. Beating Man United 7-0 feels like that feeling you get when you've just had a jolly good session of eating Haribo jellies. There was an opportunity there. I Beating Man United 7-0 feels like a mad Hunter S. Thompson style f drug induced fever dream that I hey, Jack know, them today, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. that I know happened and I you know it feels so real and yet I'm sat here questioning whether it mm. could possibly have been real because it, we're not that far away from the world we were like oh well I it, are we is this possible? Should we, you know, we gonna? How is this game gonna go? Are Man United gonna cause us problems? I think Steve thought we were gonna lose two 0 just, just no say, never no never just lose. No, never. <laughs> Go back to my predictions on both shows, and I said we were going oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> off, off camera. Off camera, Steve Hall was not confident. I, uh, I was, and uh, I. So was Graham Souness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, why not? Because you know, I know we capitulated against Real Madrid, but 
like we also battered them for a spell. And Manchester United are not Real Madrid. I don't want to shock anyone because they feel like they are. But ultimately, Manchester United are a Europa League side that we have just battered. My thinking was going into, I'll be honest, I was pe- when I got here on the Sunday, I, I, was, I was a bit pessimistic. And that was only because I thought that the two main strengths that they had were counterproductive to our what I was call our weaknesses. You know, I mean, I thought I thought Rashford on that left hand side mm. um, would would cause problems, and I thought their midfield would dominate. And, and neither would true. Um, Ten Hag kind of pepped himself a little bit, didn't he? Like, why did you put Mark Rashford up front? Like, mm. everyone knows bit, where Lip- yeah. Liverpool. If you're going to get through Liverpool, go wide. It was very odd that he did that. You know, bald managers turn up at Anfield again. It's another bad week for the ball. Another mm. ball. He had a shocker. But this time it wasn't a ref. It would happen to just be the other team's he, manager. He doesn't like that, that certain people in the media are saying they're a counter attack inside. He doesn't want to be that. So by playing Vigos in the 10 and getting people beyond him, he's trying to stop that feeling. But like Paul says, first half against Real Madrid, if you can re- replicate that form, nobody can live with you, no. including Real Madrid. So so we've had a little prelude to what we might be seeing going forward. So he, I, you know. he did himself no favours though in the build up, does he, by sort of playing down the Anfield atmosphere. Like he hasn't read that playbook, has he? If people talk about Anfield Stop before coming it, to Anfield, why do you always do it? Yeah. And then he's he's absolutely pepped himself with to put Red Horse, who's like six foot six as a ten, makes absolutely no sense. It's almost ridiculous having Dan Byrne at left back. He's just nuts. Yeah. But I suppose in his defence, in his very minute defence, some of his key players who you kind of rely upon and you'd go, they're your big players, and they're the reason why United have got better this season. Your Casemiro's, your Varane's, had absolute stinkers. Yeah. Lissandro Martinez had put in that category as well. Like Individually, not just as a collective, some of their really important lads had horror shows. It's funny, isn't it? Fernandez as well. <laughs> uh, well, Fernandez. Sticking him left wing was just, yeah, man. Uh, yeah, so he, he didn't, he did himself no favours, but I was worried that they would, like I said, go back to the question. I thought he'd go out, I thought he'd go right long and often to Rashford, and I thought Casemiro would win them the ball back, and I was worried that they were going to count it on, because I don't think we're, even though we're at home, I don't think Liverpool would ever, we're going to take a back foot. Jürgen's team selection told us that. You know, he, when he picked Harvey Elliott, he was going, like, we're going for this, and I, I was thinking, ooh, we might be vulnerable here to the counter attack, but if anything, it was a, it was another master stroke from the manager to put to put Harvey Ellis on that right hand side as well. Yeah. He's basically gone. Not asked what Man United attack and Rashford or whoever they play over here. We're gonna do. We're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna pin them back by having Trent, Salah, Elliot tripling mm-hmm. up on on Luke Shaw. Who you know he was spinning around. He was on you know spinning everywhere as well. Martinez couldn't help them. So I thought Jurgen. You know, it's all about like everything about the game in terms of tactics and, and everything, or, or you know, the stupid ten hard comments before the game and him mm. doing a bit, getting his team a bit wrong. But like, Jagan schooled him a little bit. Nailed it. He, he, he just said, right, well, what's the best way of not of not letting Casemiro dominate the ball? Just find space around him. Don't go into his area. We'll play where we want. So Harvey Elliott yeah, was almost like playing right wing, almost right next to Mo Salah, and he was saying Casemiro. Well, if you want to come over here, sound and he, and he didn't want to go there. So I thought Jürgen, like I say, it, it was brilliant. And, and, and he's, I fucking love him, don't get me wrong. But I, he, I think he absolutely schooled Ten Hag tactically as well. Like, Ten Hag made mistakes, but, in, 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 you know, we got the tactics board out in a little chess match. Um, and Klopp doesn't get enough cre- credit for that, really. You know what I mean? He, he, you know, he gets the passion and the desire and the getting the lads together and being a good guy. But, like, tactically, Liverpool exploited a, a big weakness in Man United. And like I say, We'll see how they've other teams will have seen that and gone, hang on a minute. Why are we just playing the ball into the middle all the time where Casemiro can mop us up? Let's get him let's get him over here where he doesn't want to be. United aren't there yet either. And no. they feel like they are, and it's hilarious yeah. because of their the complacency I thought that crept in of the way they were talking about you can see it by the pundits, you can see it by the fans. You know, they I think deep down they thought it was time to this, win. Exa- exactly. They're not the finished article. And so they're not capable of sorting it out for themselves on the pitch enough yet. And that's one thing, that's the difference, is that Liverpool, have, have str- some of the older lads have struggled for us this season, but we've still got them. And when they're, when they're on form and they're, they've got enough in the tank to be able to deliver, they're the kind of players you can alter how a game goes in a game because they've, they've done it at the highest level. In and out, and United have got those players, but it's, it's Varane and Casemiro who are good players, really good players, but they're not Man United players. I know Varane's been there a little bit longer, hasn't he? But they, they, they're not. I don't know. Maybe they're not enough. And in addition, going back to my point, they've also played a lot of footy in the last couple of weeks. I know they don't want to blame fatigue or whatever, but it's there. We've dealt. We've dealt with it. It's a huge thing. They're not the finished article, and it's it's boss. I reference to it because I quick going back to it. Like when we 
we were on the rise with Jürgen and we still couldn't win at Old Trafford and it was a barrier we had to get to and then when we did it mm. we fucking did it yeah. and we did it you know we, it, yeah. feel, it feels yeah. a little bit like that with them like they, yeah they are on the way up but like Anfield's a different challenge and you can't just say you know like Tanago same pitch same like all that nonsense you've got it I think you've got to embrace it and but go I think they've lost I think they I think they think that we're a mid-table team yeah and we're not mm. we're a team that was the best team in the world nine months ago and I've, I've really slipped but we've not we've still got the capability on our day to get back up to that level and and it, that our best is well better than their best yeah. and that's the that, that, that that's the thing sometimes that gets lost in this <laughs> is that if if we if the levels were what the levels were they should have that game should have been close that because when we when we've been tro- we we spent ages just we, cr- we called it crossing on the stairs they were on the way down we were on the way up and we just couldn't quite get that win against them and it was uh, that Shakiri the two Shakiri goal mm-hmm. one that was a huge win at the time because we'd had loads of really close games that they nicked a couple here it been we'd had loads of draws and that kind of thing and I finally felt like a watershed moment and then we had that last season at Old Trafford. This result isn't a fair reflection of actually the level of both sides, but it is telling that if United were as good as they're supposed to be, they'd have been able to hold Liverpool back a lot better than they did. We're nowhere near as bad as they think we are, and they're nowhere near as good as they as they think they are, mm. which is which is where it is. Let's rewind. Oh, sorry, let's fast forward a little bit from the game. We will go back to some of the individual performances and points in a minute. But the last eighteen hours, a time of recording, have been just delicious. I mean, I've, I've, sensational all the content Seriously. I've watched every replay I've seen every meme I've I've seen every pundit I've seen Jamie Carragher's reactions a million times I've watched everything I've even watched my own reactions back which is quite self-serving but fuck it I did it anyway <laughs> uh, seen uh, the merch I, oh yeah mate, we've, we've had every, I've been involved in every single I haven't slept really Oh, last night I went to bed. I was thinking, what are we going to do today? How are we going to, you know, what we're going to do? How are we going to celebrate? Just adrenaline. I got home and Claire was like, "You coming to bed?" I was like, "I can't." Like, and it, bear, bear in mind, I got home at like nine o'clock. I was like, well, "Obviously not." I'm going to watch. I'm going to start watching memes and stuff. And then it was like, I, I was like midnight. She went, "Are you still watching your phone?" I was like, "Absolutely." And I've still got fifty-five more videos to watch. I, I haven't even got to Goldbridge yet. So I was like, <laughs> "So I was like, yeah, I, I have been like basking." Like I say, it's not like. And I've seen, I've, all over, I've seen the Man United fans, oh, enjoy your trophy or enjoy your bus parade because you beat us. Like, we didn't beat you, we beat you 7 0. And if you beat us 7 0, you'd be doing the exact same thing. So settle down, you gang of man pricks, and we'll let, we're, we're doing this. And congratulations, you just won a cup and you're above us in the league. But you know what? The worst Liverpool team of all time that we've been getting called are seven points behind just now. And we've just schooled just by seven at our ground. So use girl, settle down, get yourselves back in your little box, and we're going to enjoy this for a week. Yeah. What was what's everyone's favourite bit of content been? That we've seen, we've consumed in that time. So, uh, good question. That I mean, the Goldberg stuff is brilliant. Um, it's probably Lissandro Martinez running the wrong way. Yeah. That's probably my favourite picture. I mean, I love all the Carragher stuff, but Steve's absolutely right. You just got to enjoy these moments. This is what you're in it for, ultimately, isn't it? this? Is why we love this sport. This is why we love Liverpool Football Club. Trophies are boss, but games like this don't come around all that often. So, yeah. but yeah, for me, it probably is anything Lissandro Martinez related. Him looking the wrong way is special. Yeah, yeah. special. Yeah. yeah, he's fully running. As I tweeted, he's tracking a runner, but it's like a runner down the road somewhere. <laughs> he's like nowhere near where he should be. Yeah, absolutely nowhere. I love that. By the way, saying it was it uh, when, when in the first goal, he said, you know. Rafa, Rafa Rango sent for a French baguette and he's just like sliding off the screen in slow yeah. motion that was, that, that was awesome I've loved Trent putting the crown on Salah's head that yeah, picture, picture that's yeah. incredible I, I go back to it like I say I've enjoyed my reaction I've enjoyed, I, I didn't realise Errol kissed me someone messaged me going did Errol kiss you I was like he fucking didn't and since I've I found the, the video Errol did kiss me yeah. um, which um, it wasn't consensual but I'm not complaining have you seen Trent throwing the ball <laughs> at Bruno as well so the guy, I think Trent tackles it out for like a goal kick to them and he's the one who collects the ball and Bruno like wants to get it back quickly for a throw in and he's like launches it at him like groin area. It's so good. You can oh. see Bruno want to go, but he just like stops himself. And then he kind of manhandles the line. It was a weird little engagement. Yeah, it but, was, wasn't it? Yeah, but Dead. Trent probably launched the ball back at him with boss. He's a fucking weirdo, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, you watched anything yeah. good? Um, oh, you, you got, go back to the Goldbridge thing. You've got to love the empty chair. That's class, that. But, but that, that, it, yeah. That's typical Goldbridge, isn't it? I think um, we saw the cracks in Mark Goldbridge's persona there a bit, to be honest, of like, I think there's a bit there. Because look, he, I've always said he, he, does pre, he does pre-prepare some of his things. I'm not sure if he was a as big a United fan as he claims. I'm not sure <laughs> he, he reacts quite the as way. calmly. Yeah, what you saying? I, yeah. I, I did like the energy. I like the fact that he tweeted as well. Like, um, 
you know, the, the, the lad who scores against us, we, you know, we should have signed him and said, we've got this lad from Burnley and it glazes out. I've loved all, you know, um, go and break the, get the yellow and gold scarves go back, lads. Get the, get the oh scarves back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you were tweeting that way. You stay, it's like, but I, I put that straight afterwards, like it's almost before the, it was finished, of like, get the Harry Potter scarves out, lads, because it's time to start <laughs> protest. And I heard them singing about the Glazers, uh, one, one Glazers song during the game. It's like, they yeah. don't get it. They don't get it. If they'd won that game, we'd never know the head no. word about golden green scarves would be reverted to type like don't it's like the playing team do reverted to type do reverted to type yesterday then lot on the flip side right that goes to shit Abby can play and if he play for us <laughs> I think he's well, fully, he's fully we, we jumped on maybe it was the biased footy show the podcast last week about how Ferguson come out and bodied them post match in the uh, in the League Cup final, which was hilarious because there's your all time greatest manager and he's going, Oh yeah, really good. They need a striker though, and it's like you've just got a striker in January, mate. You're playing on number ten. Yeah, 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 yeah. He can't but, move. He's but a he, fucking statue. But no, they're not wrong, but that's that's where they're at. And there was just a gate, a delicious irony. Um, staying, they wanted to Cody Gakpo. We decided to move in case they, they got Cody Gakpo, and he scores the opening goal and the goal that probably kills the game. Stone yeah, dead as well. everyone assumed he was going there. You know, we got wind of it, didn't we? We had all a little flutter and that, but it, the odds with him to go to Man United were evens at the time. So, um, yeah, it was de- definitely a case of, um, yeah, they thought they were getting him, we got him, and, and we reaped the rewards of it. He was absolutely superb, and the opening goal was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed, I think it was Phil Blundell tweeted in response to a picture of like, oh, the, the butcher of Manchester's here. And it's like the Argentina flag and the knife. And it's a picture of um, of that, that bell and the, at the back. And he, 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 it's the only thing you butchered is your fringe. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that was absolutely incredible. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed Stefa Paddock tweeting about how they were, you know, the oh, old wonder if the lads are okay after the coach greeting and all that. And, yeah, yeah. you know, when you bodied them after the back we of that. Time. I've seen people, Marcus Rashford had a tweet out about a year ago saying who, who, who's up for seven or something. Yeah. That's been getting retweeted. We I've did so, it. Oh, go on then. Yeah, look, uh, if you want. <laughs> yeah. um, Bruno Fernandes getting skinned by Stefan by Chetage and just walking off. Like, as if to say, I, I give up. That's been great. Uh, yeah, there's, I've, I've, there's probably there's loads more that I haven't seen yet, but. I can't wait. I, I, what yeah. about um, a Gakpo Dinky Winky? Where we were oh, just standing there. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I need to find that. It's one of the greatest moments. It's on, your, it's on Adam Rose's Twitter. Go and chase yeah. Adam Rose's Twitter. On, on Gakpo, though, I know we've kind of alluded to it there. Like, that was some performance from him. Like, I think he's been very good since he signed. Like, I've been really impressed. Big fan of it. I called him the second coming of Bobby Firmino on the build up yesterday. But, man, that was. That was proper class, like sheer class. He just oozed it. And to produce those two finishes just shows you he has absolutely everything. We've kind of praised his link up and his ability to do that sort of stuff, but the finishes are unreal yesterday. Yeah, I, I was just made up with absolutely everyone. It was It's what happens when you get it all right at the same time. And again, Real Madrid game felt like a precursor to that. You know, we got 20, 25 minutes, half an hour, however, you want to, however long you want to stretch it out for of when the team and the fans and everyone gets, gets together. But the difference being that because we hadn't blitzed them early, there was still a bit to be fought for. And I actually, the, the, the really encouraging thing, um, Steve, was I've heard people saying, in fact, I think it was what Darren I was saying, like Elliot faded a little bit after half an hour and, and mm. the players, but Man United came back into the game, is what happened. They actually started to get on the ball. We, we kind of blew ourselves out a little bit. And the big issue we've had this season is when we've gone gung-ho at something and we've not killed the team off, we've been so vulnerable the other way. Whereas actually what happened is we put our exertions into making sure the door stayed shut. That was my big positive from the first half. Well, they had two real opportun- two really notable opportunities. The first one being the Fernan- Fernandez header. If he scores from there, you have to put your hand up and say, great finish. You've no right to get it on target from there. So I, d- I don't see that as the big problem that the, the press and the media perceived it on the day, and certainly Sky Sports did. And then obviously the, 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 the Rashford one way as a go first time, and it com- comes off the bottom of his stub plate, runs through to Alisson. But the, yeah, we, 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 you're right. We, we gave it a go first 20 minutes or so, and then they sort of weathered that storm the irony is just before we scored Gary Neville's on the on the telly going this is a classic away performance you, you come in you, 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 you weather the storm you nullify the fans and then you get back in oh it's 1-0 to Liverpool it was it was kind of a Tim Sherwood moment <laughs> so, so so you're right um, really really good performance and they dug in and the fight was there again to, to keep United out because they definitely got a strangle order the game particularly midfield in the last 15-20 minutes of the first half and it, it's mad because it was. I don't think either side was on. I think we started the half better, and they were they were coming into it. But like, 
no one had really showed any moments of pure quality. There was I actually thought United defended quite well in terms of you know block Martinez. We have given some stuff before because you know we got spun like a top. But before that, he he done a couple of blocks. I think there was a shot that might have been going in mm. that he got in, in the way and edited. He he just stops Darwin Nunes on that cross. That was the big gets one. over the bar, yeah. good one as well. So they had they defended well. We defended pretty well. Um, and then like I say, there's two moments of you know Rashford has a chance and he bottles it. He does. I think he bottles it because he. he He's in form. He should be taking a touch there and burying that, or absolutely or, leather. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Just, yeah he more just, that. More, all that. He just kind of bottles it a little bit, and then the, we get our moments of quality, and it goes the other way because Robertson's brilliant and Gapo is just as good, even better, and that, that's what you need sometimes. Like I say in, in these type of games, a real piece of quality against a team who's defending quite well, or a mistake that's what's going to kill you. Liverpool. Again, nearly made the mistake with the Harvey Elliott suicide pass. Mm. Didn't quite, didn't work out for Man United. And then we get a real massive bit of quality. And it's two moments of genius, really. Robertson's run just uh, he, he, into the middle of the. He loves doing that sometimes. He just drives. He almost just drives like diagonal lines mm-hmm. straight towards like the, the the right corner flag because he just knows he can. It, the, the lads can run off him. The vision and the pass is amazing. And then Gakpo was like. Yeah, he does. He sends Varane for for the keep, and then just cuts inside and just bends it. It's it's a it's Sadio Mane esque. Paul Le absolutely sends him for it. Yeah, and then just like, the, 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 the the finish is magnificent, and it's, it's a it's a moment of real quality, and th- th- that's what you know. Man United, to be fair, like I said, they're good. They're good def- I said it's not after beating them seven 0 but generally speaking, the defense is a strong point of theirs, and it took a real magic moment to get through them. And past the goalie, who again, who's having a pretty good season, he saved quite a lot. There, you know, he could have been seven lads in goal. There. I think I actually think Martinez might have been in goal at one point. He was on the line, wasn't he? Um, so it was a, it was a true moment, and that's why that's why it's so good from Gapo. It wasn't like, with all due respect, the goal against Everton is a tap in where you're thinking, well, pretty much anyone could have done that, couldn't he? This is a real magic moment. Now it's the moment that when we start thinking of, um, you know, if Cody Gapo goes on to have a little key that we hope he has. We all reminisce of Sadio doing it against Arsenal on his debut. Mm-hmm. This will be the one that comes back. I remember Gakpo's goal against Man United. All the comps will be starting with that goal, won't they? And all that. So, real moments of genius, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, it's interesting. Gary Neville said uh, United yeah, no, were no, the no. best team. Did you say that, though? No. Okay. <laughs> United. United. The best Quiet. The it's time. a fluke. Um, yeah, he, I mean... <laughs> fluke. Yeah. Um, they weren't. They weren't the better team in the first half. I can, I, I can, I can entertain that it was a balanced first mm. half, but I won't hear they were the better team in the first half. Um, Dan, it, it, and it. The problem is, of course, it, it, it leads him to dig it into a little bit of a hole, and then he makes yeah. he looks a little bit of a tip for it. But I, I was just generally pleased with how Liverpool c- conducted themselves. It felt, it, and a couple of little moments aside, it felt in Liverpool's sphere of influence there's a couple of sticky moments where we I don't think our movement was great and we maybe passed ourselves into a couple of problems but the way we just composed ourselves it never honestly I never I never genuinely felt like the game was on a massive knife edge and like United were at any point really going to carve us apart no it didn't feel like that and I can't really entertain that they were the better team either I, I tweeted that we deservedly led at the break because I felt like that was just about how the balance of play have gone if somebody was to sit here and say no it was even it should have been nil nil I'd probably be okay with that conversation yeah. but it did feel like a game that was going to take a moment of like the game has been like a sort of 7 out of 10 quality throughout both teams have made mistakes both teams have sort of butchered the final pass a little bit and what have you and Harvey Elliott is probably sort of the most worrying moment from our point of view that pass he tries to play across the pitch you just shouldn't do that you can't do that he should know better than that he's more mature than that now as a football player so that was the one poor element from our perspective outside of that we defended pretty well we competed for everything and we were on top for the most part I would say it was always going to take that one bit of extra quality and it was us that produced it it was Andy Robertson and Cody Gapper obviously but what I like most about that goal I mean the finish is, is high class I've always sort of waxed lyrical about that is the fact that it was Gakpo who'd gone out to the left because Darwin Nunes was on a bit of a poor half. It clearly wasn't working for him from the left wing at all. And it was like him and Gakpo had kind of worked out between themselves. Like, you have a go in here and I'll have a go out there and we'll see what happens because we were getting loads of space down our left and that sort of link up, that overlap was on all the time. Him and um, Nunes and Robertson just couldn't get it right. So Gakpo goes, let me have a go then. And all of a sudden it just clicks like that. So that was most pleasing for me. Yeah, that was one of those things we've seen this time and time again. No, and we saw this last week as well in first halves of football under Klopp typically it's just about us keeping ourselves in the game dominating possession as best we can if we can score we score but if not we we keep it tight and mm-hmm. then at half time 
we make a couple of tactical tweak, tweaks and then we and we go on from there. And Darwin Nunes typified that in a huge way for me. And I think obviously we kind of solved it in game, but mm. he was poor in the first half. He really was. His attitude was yeah. wrong. I don't know what was going on. And we and the guy behind us, and it's interesting because in the vlog, he, when we when he scores, the guy behind me, you can hear him going, "She told you we should have took him off at half time." <laughs> <laughs> but he he and I wondered why that was, and I and I speculated at the time that maybe he'd just been overloaded with a little bit too much information because they have a really good chance. It's the fact that it's the Bruno Fernandes header at the back post mm-hmm. comes because he switches off and he, he's back in the left-back position, but he just jogs it in to kind of... And I, and I wondered a little bit, like, he's great when you ask him to roam free and be wild and all that kind of stuff, but maybe there was a bit too much on his shoulders and the game state didn't allow him to do the things that he does, which is have loads of space to run into. So it was a, it was a really tricky first half for Darwin Nunes, but pleasingly, in the second, he just got to be him again. Well, if you watch him during the game, because he's an emotional guy, he's, he's all over the place, isn't he? It could be that the occasion got to him. This has been hyped. He wanted to prove a point. He probably tried a bit too hard. It, you know, everyone's right. In the first half, you watched him thinking, there were people saying, is he injured? Is there something wrong with him? Mm. You know, what, what's wrong with Darwin? Yeah. And then, and then, as you referenced early on, Paul, that United can't solve problems on the pitch. Well, we did. And that could have been a Henderson, a bit of information, or a Van Dyke swap over. Um, and then and then in the second half, he comes out, and he's like a completely different player. So I think that's the roller coaster ride we're going to have with Darwin Nunes. In one minute, you think, what, what the hell is he doing? And in the next minute, you think, ah, oh, that's magic. That's world class. I want a show of hands, and I want everyone watching live uh, to give me a show of hands in the comments as well. Who was annoyed or worried when Bacetic didn't start the game? Oh, I mean, 100%. Right, hand down a second. Next question. Who was annoyed and a bit worried when we chose to start Harvey Elliott in this game? Worried. Only because Bacetic wasn't there. Not annoyed, worried, yeah. 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 Um, I, I thought it was a really bold move, and it sig- like you said before, it signaled, one of you said before, it signaled we were going to go for this, and I quite like that. It's brave, and that's a word Klopp uses often, brave. Um, I thought Harvey Elliott, was okay to play. I thought Bersetic would have replaced Henderson or Fabinho. That wasn't the guy I saw him missing out to. Mm-hmm. Um, so so I, I, I like Harvey Elliott and as the game wore on, that faith in him we all show from time to time proved to be justified. But but yeah, I didn't think it would be him that would miss out. I thought oh. it would be one of the other two. I thought, I had no problem with Harvey playing, but I was shocked that Bersetic wasn't. Even if he didn't want to play, if he wanted to play Harvey, I thought, well, you, could, you didn't have to play Henderson and Fabinho. Oh. I just thought, like, I think we all said we on the Thursday night show again, you know, name your team, but yes, it's just one of the first names on the team, names on the team sheet, rather than, again, it just goes to show, you know, Jürgen knows, he's got this shit covered, like, he knows what he's doing. You know, he very rarely, I said this on the final word again, but apologies for repeating myself a bit, but he did say, he very rarely does this, but he, he, you know, in this pre-match interview with Sky, he said, we set a record for counter-pressing movements against Wolves, mm-hmm. and Harvey was a big part of that. So he's explained it. He doesn't it usually just goes. I've got loads of players and I'm picking the best team for the game, etc., etc., etc. He actually gave us the reason why he chose it. He thought we're going to try and win the ball back high up the pitch, and I think Harvey gives us the best chance. Not only because he's a good presser, which he is. I don't think he's a great tackler, but he's always the second one around the ball. So yeah. like, it's like if if Fabinho was holding somebody up, Elliot's the one who comes and nicks it off them, or mm-hmm. yeah. vice versa. Trent was doing it on Fernandez a little bit. He's really good at that. And secondly, he's just more. He's happy to be more advanced up the pitch. He's more comfortable up there. So you can go and press Luke Shaw on his toes or you can have Casemiro going backwards rather than forwards. So it was a really clever, clever decision, really brave one, like Steve says. And listen, he was he was fully justified. But yeah, listen, at quarter past three when we were doing the team news, a half three when it came out, I was, I was, you know, it was a major surprise that Stefan Bajetic wasn't on the team. She's I, we talked about this, we did Thursday night pints and I proposed it and I didn't think for a while that Jordan Henderson would be starting in the, the left of the eights, to be perfectly honest. I, I thought it would be Harvey for Jordan. I thought Bajetta would keep his place. Yeah. But I, I, one of the things I was keen to point out at the time is that Harvey had it's been in really good form for us. Mm. And it was a little bit, un, probably a little bit undercut by the Crystal Palace thing because ultimately everyone else let him down <laughs> more than ever because he wanted to try and get that get us back up and running in that game. He did well in that game to, for the first, first time. But like, New, cool. New, he had a good performance off the bench at Newcastle, good performance off the bench at Crystal Palace. He was good against Wolves all all game that he was on, he was on the pitch. And I thought it was a, it, it's one of those things, isn't it? When you've got everything back up and running again, not necessarily flying, but up and running again. You've got a little bit of momentum. Klopp builds that by going to people, you, mm-hmm. I believe in you. Yeah. You're going to go and do this for me. So it was a huge shout for Harvey Elliott. And the thing that 
I mentioned this in my post-match video, but I was also surrounded by 12,000 people on the cop, so I wasn't sure how clear it was, is he's a Liverpool fan. A Liverpool fan through and through. And we forget that sometimes, that this game means just as much to him as it does to Trent Alexander-Arnold. And playing for Liverpool means just as much to him as it does Trent Alexander-Arnold. And people who are watching this at home, you know you know this, it doesn't matter where, you, where you're born, if Liverpool's in your blood, mm-hmm. in that way it gets into your blood, yeah. whether he's born in there or not, it seeps in. And you've got this you know, undying love for it. And Harvey Elliott had that, and, he, and what what I was saying, what, what Elliott brings and Bacetic brings, is energy yeah. and commitment. Mm-hmm. And yes, Elliott's not five foot ten or six foot or whatever, but he's tenacious. And it, and as long as Henderson and Fabinho or the other two midfielders are bang up for it, then that will work for us. Because Elliott's not going to not get back in. He did that all game, got up and down all game long. If you can, if you get a chance to go and sober score people and look at his heat map, he's got the right hand side of Liverpool's team covered. He's all over. He's but he's mainly between the two boxes. That's where he's that's where he's hottest. Um, he functionally performs the role. Now you might bring Drew Bellingham in, and he is six foot two, and he does have all the defensive attributes and all the attacking attributes, yeah. and that's when you go up go up a level. But Harvey Elliott is a little gem, and he'll you'll never find him wanting. And we found people wanting too many, too many times, and that was the thing that really I enjoyed about it. It was brave, it paid off, and Harvey Elliott was given the trust, and he and he ran with it. And we can remind ourselves again that we got a fucking wonder kid at the football club there. So let's enjoy him for what he is. Mate, I was on the I was on the watch and when the team news came out, the people the disrespect towards that guy, and I I was honestly I said, listen, I wouldn't have picked him, but you would be a knobhead here. Yeah? Like some some people that the, he's, he's crap, he's never done anything, he's this, he's that. And I was like, I'm not watching the same player. If anything. Mm-hmm. It's the other two that you probably want to be worried about more this season, especially than him. He's been he hasn't been the the problem. It's the other two lads you have. And you 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 made it to the point before. Harvey Elliott though can't have that type of performance that he played without Henderson and Fabinho in the team with him, having a good game. Because if they have a bad game, he just looks lost. Yeah. Because he's never gonna be on the ball and he's never really gonna win tackles. He'll be he'll be there or thereabouts, but he's not gonna be able to do it. Because Fab Fabinho and Henderson are you know, again, they are in the middle of pretty average season or, or if not worse on their own behalf but like both of them were excellent again but getting we, we, I feel like we're, we're nearly there with Fabinho it's been yeah. coming for a while hasn't it mm-hmm. he, he was shocking for a while and he kept coming off the bench and looking like he hadn't played footy before and now he's getting better and better and I thought yesterday he was he was back to somewhere near his best you know he's at his best when he wins the ball up on the edge of their box or they just can't get out there. You can, st- yeah. you know, you can sustain attack after attack after attack Henderson you said he was playing left wing he, meant he, he was everywhere he was absolutely unbelievable, Jordan Henderson. And when them two, if them two do the jobs, like I say, then that, that allows Harvey to go and be a bit more creative or go against, you know, he, he can go and jump behind Casemiro because he's yeah. not worried, he's made to box them off a little bit. So I thought that, again, the midfield, which was the, the again, second, I was saying before, I was worried about Rashford and I was worried about midfield battle. Well, Liverpool comfortably won the midfield battle. Even that part where Man United, I thought, were on top, I don't think that was the midfield mm-hmm. that was doing well, really. I, I didn't see it like that at all. I thought the defenders were doing well. And it was actually the, the the ball out wide to the foot and the to Luke Shaw in particular where they were having a bit of joy going down that left. So I I thought yeah Henderson Fabinho and Elliot all three of them brilliant. It's, it is interesting just your your analogy and your summary of, of Elliot was spot on with Besetic. I think there's a really man management element to this in that your rise has been meteoric and we think you're great, but hold your horses, rein you in a little bit, you're going to miss this one out because that's what happens in professional football. Don't get ahead of yourself. Don't believe the hype. Little reality check will do him the world of good going forward. And in reality, we were, we had, we've we got the subs now to manage a 95-minute yeah. football game. Mm-hmm. And so having him in, in reserve meant that if we needed to add a bit more steel, like if, if Fabinho's legs fell off, then you can actually just bring bring him into the six in the back end of the game and you, you don't have to lose anything. He did do that do. though. He, yeah, because I had to tell him he was playing number six. He was like, he, he was running that, the right wing, he was running down the right wing, skinning past people on the way. He was a good when he came on as well. Yeah, exactly. And and so that was that, that that's what happens now. All of a sudden, we've got players back available to us. There's there's a horses for courses style thing that we can do. We can make small tweaks. Yeah. You mm. want you in it, in prime Klopp era Liverpool, whatever you know, to use all the modern words. Our midfield was people. People used to damn it with faint praise about being very energetic and functional. All that it was a Swiss Army knife, but it wasn't like a one of those ones that's got like a magnifying glass and a, and a laser pointer in it. But it had like a corkscrew and a big fuck off knife and something to pick your nails with. You know what I mean? It had enough. It, it had enough to get you out yeah. of the of the of the most of the standard scrapes. 
to be more now you've got to have more strings to your bow and you've got to have and because of five subs you can have the midfield functionally performs the same so the swiss army knife all folds down they all look exactly the same they've all got the little logo on it's all the same color you rec- it's recognisable as a Swiss Army knife, but what we've got now is just there'll be games where you do need Elliot to play in there because mm-hmm. you want a little bit more creativity, you want a bit more progression in how you're carrying the ball and how you're passing the ball. And there'll be times when you do want to be a bit more stodgy and a bit more physical or a bit more brutal, in which case, yeah, change them around and do some other things yeah. with it. But that was the best. That's the first time we've almost been able to proactively choose our midfield in ages. Mm-hmm. And lo and behold, we and, and the attack and the front three. And lo and behold, we we the bought the results. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah. Um, no, I'm made up. I'm made up for Harvey Elliott. I really am because you do. There's always got to be a scapegoat. So it's going to be someone. I saw it again. Put it in the vlog, and instantly the YouTube comments is a guy going, "Never want to see Gomez or Jones play again." It's like, what the fuck are you talking about? We just beat Man United, and we beat Man United because we because of these players. I know it doesn't feel that way. It's more because Cody Apo scored two and Salah scored two. No, Nunes, blah blah blah. We've got a squad. You can't just have. 13 or 14 lads you need to have all these all, all these mm. players and look Curtis Jones has got a, a lot of catching up to do now you know in terms of his in terms of his career in general but and, and it's totally on the side he's not even barely worth a discussion point but I was thinking this funny enough on the drive in this morning we just need him to be Darren Fletcher he just needs to be John O'Shea he just needs to be a lad who's good enough to be at Liverpool Football Club let's not worry, let's not worry about all that and Gomez the same Gomez just needs to be our four three centre half Curtis Jones needs to be our eight three centre midfielder mm. That, and if we can get to that world, we're, we're absolutely fucking laughing. Um, Mo Salah, Dan Club, Liverpool's all-time record Premier League goal scorer. Yeah. Um, he's in the Pantheon now, mm-hmm. and he has been for a while, to be fair, of Liverpool gods, Liverpool greats. Um, it's just great to see him when he's like that. And I think the last few weeks... Again, it's another example where everyone else is pulling their weight. Mm. Mo Salah gets the platform to shine. There were definitely elements of that, wasn't it? But there was also elements for me of it didn't really seem to matter what was going on around him yesterday. He was going to produce a performance right out of the top draw, no matter what. He was sharp. Some weeks, you look at Mo Salah, and he probably ends up scoring most in most of these games, scoring one, two, possibly even three sometimes. But he hasn't really played that well occasionally. Mm-hmm. If he wasn't great, but yeah, he gets his goal, so you move on, you move move on yesterday was none of that yesterday was a performance that was absolutely 10 out of 10 from pretty much touch one from him yeah. everything he did just seemed to turn to something magical for us he was just he was bringing players out of position for them he was making things happen around him he was lending it to Trent at the right time he was giving it to Gakpo at the right time which obviously was illustrated in the assists later on and I kind of alluded to it upstairs I think earlier on with you Steve it was like obviously Salah sends to Sandro Martinez makes an absolute mess of him twists his blood essentially but how many times in sort of previous weeks would we have seen Salah maybe not at full confidence not at full tilt go himself in that situation Mm -hmm. and it might well have ended up him having a shot he might not have scored from it instead because he's playing at the very peak of his powers peak of his powers bingo by the way in the podcast he manages to pick the perfect pass and the weight is perfect it was just like I say a performance of a world class very very elite footballer and we've seen lots of them from Salah but very often we see oh yeah get his goal get his goal move on but yesterday had absolutely everything. even his strength like he was winning tackles he was holding people off it was unbelievable I think it was the best game he'd ever played I think that was Salah's best game for right. pool. I thought he was unplayable they couldn't get near him they, they took it in turns of kicking him the old Tony Pulis the old Tony Pulis tactic of everyone gets one nibble at him so you don't get a yellow Shaw tries it Casemiro tries it Martin they're all, they're all booting him he gets, he gets elbowed in the face yeah. just gets up and laughs as a tar he, he then goes back and chases Luke Shaw down and is laughing at his, in his face at him he couldn't get near him. He was unplayable. <laughs> and that second half, it was just like, I don't know, like you know, on a video game when you when you, you fill your power barrel up and you got like max strength, but you can do whatever the fuck you want to do. Mm. He just he was un- he couldn't get near him. It was ridiculous. The pace, the power, the strength, the the, the ability, the finishes are just in- two instinctive finishes. The first one, it's just off the, off the bar always makes it look better. He is just like. When he's like that, you can't stop him. Um, we haven't seen it enough again for a mil- million reasons. Some of it's on the team and some of it's on him this season. But I think personally, given everything that went on, I think that was his best performance. Was he scored? Isn't he? I've seen him score hat tricks. I've seen him score four goals in a game. But yesterday, Dan's right. It was the all round game from minute one. I can't think of a most out of mistake and error, a loose. But it was just out of this world good. It's this season staying. I have to caveat all this with 
he's been scoring goals all season for us. Mm-hmm. You know, he, 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 he scored, he's mm-hmm. had a 22 goals for us this season in all comps, <laughs> which is just ridiculous. <laughs> um, but at times it's felt a little bit like Egypt Salah that we've had. And I feel, I feel like that's the Salah we got back from the AFCON. And he's had little bits and pieces where he's been back to, back to himself. He's got the instinctive finish. He's such a good, he's just a great goal scorer. But his all-round play, it's that thing of, like, I've got to be the guy who does it. Yeah. Instead of just being, the guy who just sticks stuff away, he's, I, I think he, like what Dan said, he, he feels like he's got to be the guy who dribbles past three and sticks it in because no, no one else can do it for him. And he looks very isolated. He cuts a lonely figure when he's playing like that. Whereas that, that's the thing, Cody Gappo's making runs in front of him now and Darwin Nunes, and he's getting that understanding. And he knows that I'm going to give a goal because I'm going to get a goal back in return. Mm. And that was what made our original front three function was that everyone knew they were going to get a turn. And Salas gets to play now this like elder statesman of Liverpool's mm. attack, but in a way that like Messi kind of did, you know, toward the to, in the last sort of five years, probably of his Barcelona career. Everyone else gets to do a lot of the do a lot more running and do a lot more of the energetic stuff, and Mo Salah just gets to take all the plaudits and score the goals. And that was again, that was the best example against Manchester United of I can see a world now where Mo Salah's contract makes sense. Yeah. And it hasn't done for a few mm. weeks because as much as he scored the goals, he hasn't scored at a better goal return. He hasn't like got thirty three percent more goals because he's you know, he's he's got a, a massive boost to his pay or whatever. But I can see a well where you can have two or three seasons at least now of these guys being the main guys. But it was like when we all pushed for him, the world pushed for him to get player, you know, Ballon d'Or, and he missed out. He came back from the Afcon. He never really found that form again. He's a guy who needs to have that main character syndrome. And all the best players in the world, your Messi, your Ronaldo's, you can go on to the annals of history. They, they all want to be the number one guy, the main character, and it suits him to be that. And you're, you're exactly right. That's probably the closest to pre-Afcon Ballon d'Or pushing most Salah we've mm-hmm. seen. And there's been times when all of us have sat and spoke about his contract and thought he's getting paid an awful lot of money. And it's not the same Mo Salah. It's it's probably been 14, 15 months since we've seen a performance of that magnitude, and that's one of the best ones he's ever given us. So yeah. so a real welcome return to that Mo Salah, and long may it continue for me. You can tell by the reaction to the second goal as well. Obviously, he, yeah. he knows the record. Like you don't whip your top off for no reason for, for scoring that one. I mean, why wouldn't you when you look like that? Yeah. But, but I sense giving him the crown. Have yell it's bowing down to him. like everybody knows. Like they are in awe of this fella. They, you know, everyone talks about so well about him because we don't see most out of the leader. We don't see none of that, do we? But the, you can tell like, the, the way people speak about him and the way they act towards him. He's just like, everything about him. He is, you know, he's high class. His interview, yeah, I'm going to go and have a cup of tea and go to bed because that's just what that's me. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he is just, he's a high class individual. He's, the standards he sets himself are ridiculous. The standards we now place upon him are ridiculous. And um, he continues to meet them, like I say, in a season where before, obviously, 20 odd goals, and we were like, Mm, and we were all saying it. Uh, could, maybe Mo Salah's like, no, he, don't worry about Mo, he's not, Mo Salah's not the problem. The, the, you know, if Liverpool are functioning fine, you you won't get no. There's no issues about Mohamed Salah. And I, I like we've seen the you know the Salah purple patches. And last time it was around the five 0 at Old Trafford. At that point when he was, you know, mm. the best player in the world. We had t-shirts with him. We were singing the song, you know, Salah's the best in the world and all that kind of stuff. He has these patches, and sometimes he just starts with one of these games, and and he, he can go on a little run where he'll have like ten games or something where he's just un, you know untouchable. Um, oh, fingers crossed. That's how we do now. Well, he's got thirty three goals and assists in all comps this season. The issue has been it's it's the Premier League. That's where we that's where we've struggled, and I mentioned this a few weeks ago. But you know we haven't had someone who's been just banging the goals you either have one person who does it all or you spread it out a bit and we've spread it out but not had the volume at the same time whereas now it just feels like it's starting to click again mm-hmm. this is just on Premier League goals Salah's now got 11 Darwin Nunes has now got 8 um, alongside Roberto Firmino with 8 Cody Gappo quietly has got 4 Premier League goals for us Um in eight appearances in the Premier League, which is phenomenal given that it was only Thursday I was saying, I'm not sure he's got the goals in him Um and, you know, we've got Luis Diaz still to come back into that, potentially. The one thing I thought I, I, I helped the whole the whole endeavour, and it was typified by the, the response when he comes on the pitch, the Roberto Firmino news, I, weirdly, I think helps us. I think it's set a great tone of, like, let's give Bobby one last big mm-hmm. hurrah, let's do it, let's almost do it for Bobby. He's out there enjoying He's going to go and leave absolutely nothing in the tank between now and the end of the season, but... You could see it in how 
he scored the goal and Trent's pushing him towards the cop to go and get his moment and you see, and, and then Trent's there putting the crown on, on, on Salah and like the old school lads are all like mm. oh, you're putting their arms around each other and they're the core they're the old they're the old school and then they're embracing these new lads as well and for me you know I just feel like he gets down to like he needs to come on get his name so beam and smile when it when it's happening we get three more months of a prime Roberto Firmino and all the while I think it just does I don't think anyone's sad because the fact that he's going on his own terms and he's made it as clear as possible this could be a real a real negative it could be a real you know really really sad thing but instead it feels like a a potentially galvanising moment for everyone. Well, I mean, it, it was the perfect way to start your long farewell, wasn't it? Let's be honest about it. I mean, to come on and score, and obviously look quite emotional afterwards as well, and it was kind of, it typifies the, the player he's been for, was the fact he didn't really want to go and take the adulation, like he loved the celebration, let's not, get, let's not shy away from that, but the fact that Trent does have to push him back to the cop, it's almost like, oh no, no, we'll just get on with the game, like it, the other lads have scored, it's like, no, no, Bobby, you go, and I think, if this is to be, well, it is to be a sort of his departing message now, if you like. It, it is a real opportunity for us to kind of go out on a high with him because it would be a real shame for his Liverpool career if he were to go out on a bit of a damp squib and kind of the season peters out. So if we go on a run from here on out and do get top four, which is the aim now that has to be seen as an achievement for us. It's not what we all wanted, but we are where we are. But it's almost like do it for Bobby's sake, like you yeah. say. And the fact he gets to come on and enjoy that moment and get his goal is just... Like I say, it's the perfect start to what could be a pretty emotional farewell, I think, when it does come to it. Because he is a modern-day Liverpool legend. There's no two ways about that. And we all absolutely adore him for everything he's given to the club. And like I say, I think that was hopefully just a small part of what's going to be a pretty perfect send-off. Yeah, it was great. And it, it was... It ends up being like a magical moment. I wouldn't, I couldn't have handpicked the better person to score the seventh goal in that game, Steve. Mm -hmm. no. He comes on the pitch, you get him... He's, I mean, it's... It's wonderfully Bobby. You know, he megs the goalkeeper for the seventh yeah. goal. Like, it's just, yeah, it is. And he will be sorely missed. But um, we've got loads more games where he's got he's got a chance to have a real lasting impact on this season. Yeah, and, and maybe in a similar way as he was on Sunday in regards that Cody Gakpo is clearly the future and we need to build that now. We need to use the remainder of the season to make sure everyone flies out the traps at the start of next season and we give the best account of ourselves early doors. He may well come on in cameos for the rest of the season. He isn't the future of what Klopp's trying to build. We get that, we know that, we're very grateful for that. We want to see him, we want to see him before he goes. Um, you're quite right, yesterday, you know, the, op the opposition, the score, the seventh goal. If you were a script writer and you were writing the most fanciful of football matches, that would be your storyline wouldn't it so um yeah you're right it's not it's not it is sad but it's not sad if you can say that you know it's um it's weird that he's going but but we look like we're going to be okay with the, the people that are picking up the mantle from yeah, him exactly i said the only person the only Liverpool's later person who didn't want bobby to score that goal was probably, was probably mo salah i think he wanted his attack than he did <laughs> <laughs> when, 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 when um, jota goes to ah, salah's screen he wants that penalty doesn't he but yeah it was i actually thought it, again it was a it was just a reminder like Liverpool this time last season won games because we had strikers on the bench and we brought on who could change games. Not less than seven nils a freak, don't get me wrong, it's brilliant. But like there were games where oh this is a bit tight and then you can just go to your bench and go, right, Diaz, Bobby, you're going on, or Jota, you're going on, you know what I mean? And we're there now. We're one away. We're one away for having six again. At the moment we've got five of them and that, that's really helpful. And the six one's not too far away, touch wood. Uh, that that could be a, that's gonna be a, a major positive going forward. You know I mean? If you can especially with five subs, if you're looking at your bench I say, say you start Jota, Gapo, Nunes like you did yesterday. You can turn around. You've got so if you start Gapo, Nunes, Salah, and then you can turn around and go right. I've got Bobby, I've got Diaz, and I've got Jota. Mm. Like uh, first of all, you're never out the game. You're never thinking, oh, where's the goal going to come from? Because you can look at you're looking at three lads there who can all do something on your bench, whatever way around you do it. So again, provided you can all stay fit and fire, and Roberto Firmino is going to be sixth choice when Luis Diaz comes back. That's a great place to be in for Liverpool. If he's your sixth best option up front, you're doing all right, aren't you? Freaking hell. And yeah. I agree. You know, we are now on the you know the Bobby Swan song tour, you know, the farewell tour. Just go and play the hits like for a few more months, Bobby. Get you know, do some more no look finishes. Yeah, yeah, a couple of no look finishes, a couple of eye patches, a couple of yeah. silky samba skills, give the ball only halfway in line and go and win it back. Make us shit <laughs> ourselves. Or go and play the hits a few more months. And I am with you. Like we'll see loads of twenty minute cameos. And I and 
What's interesting about his celebration, he's not usually an emotional guy at all, but like how he celebrates, he's usually like a bit of laugh. Mm. The eye part, you know, he pulls his shorts down, or he does one of the dancers, or he's doing the high kicks. This one was like pure emotion. Different, like, like it, yeah, like I can real outpour him from him. We don't really see that from him. Well, it's it, been an emotional week for him yes. because he's at, going to your manager and saying, mate, I've loved it here, but I'm off now. Mm. That's never easy. That has been on his mind for a while. That, that isn't a decision that just happens. He's been yeah. weighing this up for a yeah, while. He's been, wait- he's been waiting for the perfect moment to have that conversation. He's probably known that for a little while. And there isn't one. Yeah, no, well, it's I, interesting. No. Sorry, it's interesting that a couple of players coming back from injuries is kind of the moment he's chosen to go and do it. He won a couple of games and stuff. He has picked a very interesting moment there to go and Absolutely. have a Absolutely. And, and against fans... That's what was so wonderful about the whole thing is we found it out in the week. Everyone was a bit like, oh, a bit down on oh, Bobby Firmino. Oh, God, we love him. We all got to share loads of videos and look back at his best moments. And, oh, God, yeah, I love Bobby Firmino so much. But then for Gakpo to come in and play like that, start that game, which sends the message that says, this is, this is what the future is. He scores the goals. He basically wins us the football match. And then Bobby comes on the old master. It's... Um, it's it's feeling a great feeling of like they've got this. This is okay. This isn't sunrise sunset. It's as natural as the as the as the coming in and out of the tide. You know, football teams evolve and change, but Liverpool remains eternal. That kind of stuff, as opposed to let's use Genie Van Alden leaving as an example, which felt a bit like well, I mean, technically Thiago was his replacement. As much as people forget that, but you know, when you don't. It feels it when the neck. It's nice to have the next mm. ready yeah. and already in, and all of a sudden. The Gakpo signing in January now looks like an absolutely incredibly astute piece of business because we're not replacing Bobby in the summer mm. and then trying to go, right, here's some videos of what Roberto Firmino did. Can you try and do that, please? No, you get to watch him, you get to train with him, you get to rub off on him or vice versa. Um, yeah, it felt it felt naturalless for the first time in ages, like a natural passing of the torch as opposed to someone goes and you look around and go, fuck, Who's who's doing this job now that he's that he's yeah. gone? Uh, you can you do the job? No. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah very, 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 very encouraging. Um, certainly, there's tons of players we could talk about. To be honest, we could do the whole fucking team. To be honest, these points interesting about the, you know the five is a six. There will be a six. Yeah. If you look across world football and look at squads. I'll, I'll challenge anyone to come back to me with a squad that's got six better forwards in its yeah. in its squad system. If we there can keep one. if we can keep Jota fit, and that's a big ask. Yeah. He's the, he's the next mission is to get him a goal yeah. and get him back in the goals and see if he's still that. See if he can still be that main goal threat because he, he's a twenty goal a season forward. Because of his lack of pace, I'm a little I'm a little worried for him in the long term because we all of a sudden you've got Gakpo. You've got Nunes and you've got Diaz and Salah there. Jota starts to look a little uncomfortable, but if if he finds his form, I, honestly, I, you left for me, no go for me, and you've got five, and then you either you're hoping that between Elliot Carvalho and let's say K Gordon Ben Doak, one of them is good enough to be your sixth, mm. and then then you 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 evolve and you move on to the next. Yeah, I agree on Jota, by the way, just to say as well. I think his sort of his prize asset for us is just his instinctive goal scoring. You mentioned sort of the ability to change games from the bench. Jogo Jota is that for me because he comes on pretty much into any game situation, no matter how poorly you're playing, and gets a goal. That's him at his best. He hasn't done that at all this season, quite frankly, in yeah. the Premier League. He's not as good as Diaz on the left wing because he's not as quick, as incisive as Diaz, and he's not as good as Gakpo at playing the false nine because Gakpo is a little bit more physical, stronger, his touches a little bit better so Jota for me has to find his goal scoring boots otherwise you do start to question his role in the squad moving forward and I love him by the way but he kind of has to fix Jota that plays, not now but he does have to fix for it for me it just, Jota plays in the games against the bottom 10 at home you, just, you, aren't, you don't need a number 9 dropping into the midfield and win. Jota is just your finisher well, he's, just another, he's just a different and type he's, of player know, he's fucking brilliant he is brilliant he's classic he's, just, he just, he's another one he's lost and it's the thing with Diaz, we keep saying, oh, he's going to be back soon, but like he's going to be back, but like he's going to be back, back. Mm. You know what I mean? There's a, like, at the minute, we've got four and a half because Jota's not quite there. No. So like we, we, we're not looking ahead of ourselves, but I've got no no, no question about any of the ability-wise. There's no question yeah, about those. It's back to the point, though, of having lots of different ways to be. Yeah, we used to always say yeah. it was an old like wrestling-ism, you know, talking about Ric Flair and stuff, and be like, if the left one don't get you, then the right one will. But ours is, if the left one don't get you, then the, and the right one don't get you, then the middle one will get you. Mm. Or... Then the right one will then get you. Then the left one will get you. Then why you fucked? And then we had a Jota, and that was like a, fo- a fourth guy who can do that. But all of a sudden, we've got five senior footballers 
and then space for a wonder kid or two to come in and be a, a sprinkle a bit of magic. It, we're in very we're a very healthy situation. It's, it's interesting because you look at the dynamics of how the team might line up. You, you, what we might be seeing here is is it's between Nunes and Jota to play through the middle and the furthest point forward. You look at the people we're looking at signing. It could lead to a four two three one for next season when we go mega attacking with all these guys and go. We're just going to blow you out the water, which we'd all love to see, by the way. Um, and then it could just be looking when everyone's available it's it's a shootout between those two yeah, well there will be games where you want you want to have that four up front because we're not going to have players we're not going to play man united every week i'm sorry guys as much as we'd love to play man united every week it's not going to happen uh so we are going to have to play teams who are good uh and are you know strong defensively and i'm well aware that i'm saying this from us being below them in the league but you know what i don't think Fuck. that's going to last very long. Enjoy this, then, i genuinely yeah. don't think that's going to be long, that was a, a long thing the, the Glazer protest, they need to get Mo Salah protest because he fucking owns them as well, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> 12 goals against them, no, that's, that's incredible. 12 goals in 12 games, I think it is now, Mo Salah against Man United, just absolute. You, you talk about you know, the, the big plays and the big games, there's no bigger game for us than that, that run is the any time and time again delivers that tricks to... Yeah, there was a time fresh. when he got questioned in big games as well, by the way. I remember we had the sco- well, he hadn't scored against United for a while and then he, he just started... Oh, yeah, he's just, just yeah. 12, in, <laughs> uh, uh, 12 in 12, I think he scored. Yeah, yeah, yeah some assists yeah. thrown in for the good measure as well. That came off like. the back of the... the Champions League final when he got injured and everyone was like yeah. you really needed to rely on him and he wasn't yeah. there for you that was his fault entirely yeah judo wrestled he wasn't WWE wrestled yeah. to the floor with a straight yeah. arm was he right sounds uh, we're going to move things on I, uh, this, we're going to talk about Bournemouth Liverpool I don't want to so we'll probably talk a bit more about Man United in the back end but we are going to do agony rant after the break um, we've got a very short advert break for you guys with some wonderful things that we think you should be drawing your attention towards we'll see us in a sec Hey, what's happening? We've got a boss prize for all of our club legend subscribers this month. Uh, it's been 30 years of Liverpool partnering with Carlsberg. They released the special edition Liverpool Carlsberg cans and we have got sets of them to give away. Eight, in fact. Uh, to be with a chance of winning them, all you've got to do is either upgrade your existing subscription from Club Captain to Club Legend or head to redmenplus.com and join directly as a Club Legend there. Your name will be entered in and yes, you could have these wonderful, wonderful beer cans in your personal Liverpool collection. Look great on a shelf or a mantelpiece or probably in your recycling bin. Um, Get involved, redmenplus.com. Make sure that you are 18 plus. Uh, only 18 plus people can win this and obviously be responsible with your drinking as well. But yeah, look at them. Are they magnificent? And they could be yours. My Liverpool debut, a new series, exploring where it all began for a number of Anfield favourites. We had that belief and nothing was going to get in our way, nothing was going to stop us. I was just fortunate to get my chance. I'm about to wear the red strip for the first time and play with all the wonderful talent that I was in awe of. And the travelling Liverpool fans started singing my name. You can imagine how special that felt. The football saved my life. It was amazing to be part of, of that lineup with that calibre of players. I knew I deserved to be there. I knew I deserved that chance. I knew I was ready. I'm Jamie Carragher. I'm Phil Thompson. I'm Martin Kelly. I'm Jim Beglin. I'm Neil Meller. My name is Bruce David Grobola. And this is my Liverpool debut. Hey, yes, welcome back. Um, we are trying to solve some tech issues that are going to show you a wonderful thing that we've just released. Um, but in, while I while I frantically try to host the show and solve that at the same time, let's do Agony Rant. Um, I, I imagine slightly less things to get off our chest, but there are. I, I've certainly got one or two things that I'm that's burning my adult at the moment that I'd like to do. Um, Dan, have you got anything? I don't think so, mate. No, the only one I, I have got a slight grievance, if that leaked kit last week is accurate, then... I will blow my own brains out, but outside of that, I'm quite cool. Uh, I don't know if you've got, you've got anything instead. <laughs> With the, these the green ones, the green and white. Yeah, there's a couple of them which are I'm told are, are fake. Okay, uh, I'm going to need that not to be Indy Kyler. Is that right? No, no it's that? not Indy Kyler. There's a guy on Twitter um, who is always the guy who leaks the kits every year, mm. but he doesn't totally. He gets a, a look at them. And then he normally passed that on to a designer who creates an interpretation based on what he's seen. Okay. And he said the two ones, which are like the mad paint striped yeah. green things, are just not are not right at all. They're like 
that it's what happens every year as well. It's why it's hilarious when you go on like the H gate in the summer and you can get n- not Liverpool. You can get things that lads on Twitter have just made up and mm-hmm. then someone sees that and makes it into a template and then starts selling it. Like last, the, the white away kit from this season, there's lo- the, at the start of the season, I saw dozens and dozens of fake versions of that when it didn't have the mad pattern on it. it was yeah. like a, but it was a similar thing, but it was it was, it was was miles off anyway. I think you'll be all right. Good, I'm glad. But I don't know what it looks like. It might be shit still. I'm cool in that case. I'll, I will forego my agony rant and I'll give it to Jürgen Klopp. Okay. And I will preach on his behalf of the lad who nearly took Andy Robbo and Curtis Jones out. Yeah. Jürgen was furious. He was getting, Gross, yeah. We just scored a seventh goal against Man United and the manager was going absolutely apeshit. Um, yeah, stay off the pitch. Just, just on that, I see. No, if you're going to, by the way, if you're going to fucking, sorry, if you're going to go on the pitch and run around and not get yourself involved and sound, whatever, mm. stay on the players, please. Yeah. Like, don't don't injure us. <laughs> we, Very we, nearly we, did, yeah. He nearly took Andy Robbo's fucking leg off. Yeah. Jürgen was absolutely livid. So yeah, I've forgiven my... Um, my agony rants, I've, I've handed it to Jürgen and I've allowed him to preach because that was fucking silly. That. Imagine he'd have took two of our lads out. Poor Curtis Jones, he just come back onto the team. He's got fucking stress fractures in his legs or something and some lad just comes and wipes him out. With it would be a very Curtis Jones thing to happen, wouldn't it, if he was to get injured like that? <laughs> I'd, somehow I'd be out for a month now. Like, <laughs> after that, like, a clash of the world that's it's, happened. It's but. funny, isn't it, though? It's like, there's a mo because when I immediately see it, my first reaction is to laugh. Because we're, we're, we're beating Man United 7 0, and someone's just gone wild and just wants to go and hug the players. But it's the perfect example of like why you don't. Yeah. Because two two reasons, like again, the, the re- one of the main reasons why you're not allowed is just like that could be fucking any lunatic. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I know this sounds like the kind of thing my mum would say based off something that someone shared on her Facebook feed. But if someone ran on with a knife, and you know what I mean? Because you can, because lunatic can I mean like not to go all it, but like. It's a gun, but like John Lennon gets killed in a crowd. What happened in the tennis with Monica Sellers? Yeah, yeah she exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. And that can happen, and that's why you don't, you don't. And I know it's cute when kids run on and all that kind of stuff. It has its, it has its moments, and if he ends up in the crowd and he's just hugging them, it's quite a funny. It could be quite a funny little thing, but I mean, fucking Alison Becker fell over three times in the game. Where let alone some lad running on in his in his, 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 his crates <laughs> or whatever, like you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> not it's not it's not a great look. Um, but I mentioned this on the last fan standard show, which is coming out this week, is that the this happened to Adrian in the Super Cup. Yes, he, he played yeah, yeah. he played with like ankle strapping on the game after the game after the Super Cup because some run ran on the pitch, slipped and took him out. And like imagine losing Andy Robertson for the rest of the season to an ankle yeah. ligament injury because. You've just fucking ran on the pitch, and, and I know it could be a great moment. It could be this and that, but that's the the balance. And was is it worth it? No, no, I agree. That's a bit fucking stupid, as far as I'm concerned. Anyone else? Um, yeah, fans who take calls during games. I was sat next to a bloke who took two phone calls during the game, including yeah. trying to FaceTime the match to somebody. Um, absolutely bizarre. And then that stupid chant, who are you? When when um, we scored against Wolves in in the far in the upper in the far upper. Yeah, that can get in the bin, can't it? Yeah. yeah, that absolutely can get in the bin. I think we had a couple of those where, again, it's like people. I've done this a lot I've recently. I don't like to. It's not like a. It's not about where you're from or blah blah blah. But there is a thing of we don't want getting education from the cop. There's just things we don't sing as Liverpool fans. There's ways we don't act or behave, and and it's like. It's part of the culture of the football club. Mm-hmm. It makes us different, and you can't get you don't get to pick and choose. It's why you don't sing. Is this a library, or you know, is there a, f- a or fragile... your shit ass or a goal? Oh, a goal. That's the worst. God, and there's that's and the worst. And there's is, just there's it? just things that are just <laughs> well, it's just wool behaviour. You know what I mean? Or it's it's stereotypical, fucking modern football fan. Behavior and and that's what stands us apart is that we don't have to have the same identical things as every as everyone else. Mm. Um, so yeah, it leads into mine. Um, playing banners. I right. Can I just sorry, come back on come back on me, please, Aaron. I'm gonna start this off by saying everyone has a right to protest. You can protest whatever you want. Fill your boots. Protest away. Why I don't like plain banners as a method of uh, protest, because protest has to be a two-way thing for me. 
you've got and I know and I understand that not people aren't can't get to Liverpool to protest and that sort of thing and so you, you feel removed and you feel like you've got to do something to take action so you can get your voice heard I appreciate that I do I, I, I genuinely feel that you feel a disconnect and so you you know you have to find some way to get your voice out there why I don't look there was a playing banner protesting FSG it's not the first group of people to do that it, there was one a few years back as well the problem with doing that is that it removes people's right to reply, and I think it tarnishes an entire fan base with a with a brush. Or in or as what it's done is it's actually tarnished probably quite a few sensible people who've been swept up in a in a in a in a thing and feeling like it's part of a wider, much grander issue than it actually than it actually is or movement. Sorry, than it is not issue. When you go to the ground and you protest, if people disagree with your protest, they tell you. And they get to do it, and you get to have your beliefs questioned back, and then you get to go. Hmm, based on the response from that, ah, maybe I'm, maybe I'm not right here. Maybe I'm, maybe I've got the wrong end of the stick or whatever. And I remember when we were protesting Hicks and Gillette, hundreds of people would turn up at Anfield, and they'd stand there in unity, and they'd do the chant, and they made banners and songs and football shirts and stuff, and they had people go go back at them. What the fuck are you doing? Get behind the team. Fucking criticize it. And they were right to protest because it was Six and Gillette and they needed to protest and we needed to get them out of the club because they were they were bleeding Liverpool Football Club dry. When you do playing banners, I get it, it's an avenue for it's an avenue for expression and an avenue for protest. But it's it's faceless it's another faceless example That's of That's my protest. thing as well, mate, is that like I think if you're going to protest something, you need to be at your protest. And unless it was the fella flying the airplane who decided to uh, to protest that, like that, that's why. Listen, if you're against the owners, you fault, whatever it is, that's absolutely fine. But I don't think I'm not sure having a protest that you're not at, or if there's a group of people who want to have a protest, if you're not there, I think that's, it almost cheapens it a little bit as well. Um, because, like I say, if it, it just it's it that just means it, you, you, there's no. There's no legs behind it, you know. What I mean, fair enough. To, I think it was crowdfunded. I'm right saying, or there, there was, it was. Well, I, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't yeah. know well, that, I think that was what it was. But like, that's not like you. If you want to go and protest against the, the, the owners or whoever it is, go and fill your boot. You are actually, you are more than welcome to do it. Mm-hmm. But but if you're not there, I think that kind of, I don't know. It kind of cheapens the message because then it's like, well. Is there one person who thinks this? Is there a million people who think this? Is there a thousand people who yeah. think this? We don't know. Like there are people, there are definitely people who, who are who are, who are in that camp of like yeah. they they are staunch. Like we will get rid of these owners by hook or by crook. That's fine for your books. I think they should sell the club, but it looks like they're not going to. I'm not quite there where I'm, I don't think I would be able to protest about it just yet. Personally, that's my that's my thoughts. But everyone's different. Everyone can do what they want. But I think yeah, I, I don't know. Like, in general, I don't like I don't like playing balance for anything really. Sometimes they can be a bit funny if it's like you know, like if you if you even then no not in fact no no they're just a bit shit. I just don't I just don't get the point because like I say, I think it cheapens your message because if you're if it's your protest and you've got a group of people behind your protest, the best thing you can do to do your protest is to show your strength in numbers. Mm. Get out there with your banners, with your chants, with your songs. Walk out the ground on seventy seven minutes like people did for tickets. There's, there's ways you can do it. I'm just I'm not sure like, you, you're getting your message across in the right way by paying get, paying one fella a grand or whatever to go and fly an airplane above above uh, above roof. But what it has done, it, it's got them. Listen, it was it was on every journalist tweeted about it. It was in newspapers. We're talking about it now, mm. so it has garnered some attention. It got them laughed at by journalists is the thing, and it makes it makes collectively the fan base look a bit fucking stupid because when you start to go to external scrutiny of it, it's all right, all well and good when everyone's sat in little rooms or in Twitter spaces or whatever or online in forums, hyping yourself up and like you know getting yourself pumped up for it. But it's then you take that when you take that opinion to the wider world, the wider football community is looking at it and going, "Oh, what are you doing?" Looks, no, I saw I saw some people who, who were for it, but I've seen a lot of people who were against it, and I've seen people who I know would like the owners to sell. I'm not going to name names because it's not fair on them because I, I haven't asked permission. But like, you were like, "I would like them to sell," but that was fucking embarrassing. That or that was cringy. Oh, we don't do that. Like, that that's what mm. that's generally the response I've had because I think there are a lot of people who say the ownership is a big issue going forwards. But like, I know a lot of people who would probably maybe. Not join in a process, but maybe, maybe sit in a pool and they'll go, you know what, fair enough, you're doing it for yourselves. I know I know personally at least four people who, I, who I'm in WhatsApp groups with who don't particularly like that. Well, it's only four. Don't you like it's not a big... Who are like, yeah, but my God, that's fucking shit. That's cringy. That, that's cheesy. That, who didn't like it? So, but yeah, it's it, as, a, as a concept, playing banners as protesters is just a bit shit. 
Yeah, it is. And as I say, that's it's very modern. And it's not the first time we've had this for years. It's the same as like, it's hashtags and plain banners are all the same thing. They're not real. It's the same as like changing the, putting a new badge on your on your avatar to 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 you know to say I'm I'm dead behind Ukraine. It's like oh yeah, like that's cool because we can we can we can have these things and we can generally tell the world or know what our stance is on things. But this is like this is different. This this has got to go beyond that. If you want protest and you want change, it's got to be it's it's got to be physical. And I know there's people who can't do it, but you've got to. But that's that's unfortunately that's what it's what it's going to be. It, it's passive aggressive as it is at the moment, which typifies the whole response, to be honest, because the whole thing is, is passive aggressive because it's lots of snide comments online and, and you know, and, and all this kind of stuff and people pop, pay, taking shots and stuff. But I, I don't, I don't like them. That's my, ultimately my agony around this, this, but this, I play manners. I don't like, I just think I do. I think they're just, I think they're just an extension of hashtags, mm. which is to say you, you can't organize enough physical people to get behind something. So you've done something that, and again, with it being faces, it could be anyone. I know there's a general sense that this is people online, but there's no, and they eventually proof my out itself. People might have the receipt or whatever, but I know. But you can anyone can put a plain banner up. I could, I could, do, I could get one over Old Trafford for next week if I wanted to. Shane Glazers in, if mm. I really fancied it for a fucking laugh, and that goes back to it. There's gotta be, there's gotta be a face behind this. There's gotta be, there's, got, it's gotta be a real movement. If it's as big as it's claimed then there will be people in Liverpool and there will be people who are in travelling distance who are passionate enough about it to come because when there's not a million Liverpool fans in Liverpool, but when we win trophies, a million people will come mm. and line the street to Liverpool because they feel passionately about it. There should It stands to reason we should be able to muster a 1,000 people or 100 people or 50 people together to go and be the, the, the physical face of this rather than doing this stuff that makes us all look a bit fucking It's not reading the room, is it? Because... To those people that don't need an excuse, it becomes a sweeping generalisation of what Liverpool fans think. To those people looking at it from social media platforms, and we've all said it, and it's true, the, the, the guys that go to the game are not the people that sit on social media casting judgments on everything that the owners do. So so I'm with you. It's a, it's a, it's an abomination. I really can't stand it. I just, we'll never know now, because the season's a bit of, it's been a bit of a fucking shambles, and we don't know how it's going to go on from here on in. But it's interesting that more and more stuff's come out about like how they got pre-season wrong, mm. and how you know, and 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 they're, they're hoping to put that right this time around. And it does make you wonder that if they'd just been made better decisions in pre-season, would we have had less injury problems? Which mean all of the issues around the transfers and all that would have been less exacerbated. Liverpool would have had a better season, and none of this would have reared its head to the to the extent that it has. We'll never know that. But my overriding sense is. Is a lot of this is just has is, is been born of Liverpool not being good on the pitch because it feeds the idea that the owners haven't invested enough and nobody thinks the owners have invested too much money by the way and I don't think there's many people who think they've invested an adequate amount of money in the playing squad but when Liverpool are capable of winning stuff on the pitch then you can't argue with the results of it so that's one of the things that's undercut but for me on the whole thing just to sort of wrap up for me on it anyway is like I you, when you when you follow them up for long enough you tend to just, the stuff you just need to let breathe. And that's the problem with FSG, is they very rarely do anything that requires you, well, when they, but that's it, I like, they do things all the time that require you to fucking stand up and fucking shout for it. And my God, we've done that on, on, on more than a handful of opportunities. But most of the time when it comes to how they manage the club, it's, it's like watching fucking clouds move across the sky or watching, you know, icebergs move around and stuff. You've kind of just got to let it, play out because if they get it right in the summer and they go but Liverpool are able to compete again what's the what's the point what's the difference them and a new ownership group that doesn't make any difference to me anyway um, before we get into Bournemouth I think I'm, Aaron have we got the laptop Yes. Hmm. So we've got some celebratory merch available right now. Not only have we got uh, obviously t-shirts for the new front three, we've got Cody Gapo, we've got uh, Dow Nunes, and we've got the King Range, including Mo Salah. Uh, we have got a magnificent seven uh, t-shirt, which is celebrating, of course, Liverpool scoring seven goals against Manchester United at home. 
wonderful stuff of course based on the uh, the old western of course uh, and that itself based on the old samurai film um there is that uh, there is also that's available i believe we've got that on a mug as well but in addition we we've got a brand new mug as well that has just dropped in addition to our since 1995 let's laugh at jordan <laughs> pickford mug um the magnificent seven is available as a mug and we've got our cara seven nev nil mug <laughs> as well uh, which has just this minute dropped on the redmenmerch.com so I'm sure you'll have seen it and we didn't really mention it enough the, the look from Jamie Carragher on that cam that's watching the, the commentary cam when he realises Neville's face and he just sees it as social it's gold like and yeah. he just looks and he just smirks at the camera well it's that on a mug with the um, with the the scoreboard there. It's as the well. sequel to Ferguson and, and, uh, and Kenny. Kenny. Kenny yeah. It's the follow up. It's the it's the it's the it's the difficult B album. But I reckon we've nailed it. Yeah, it's, it's actually, yeah, it's fantastic. Kavis, Kavis sees that moment, hasn't he? He's seen that play out in his head. And he's gone. This is me. I I, I, just it. before he's taken a selfie of him as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he realizes, doesn't he? Goes, he goes, he looks at the camera. Nev. Realizes Nev smiles <laughs> and then takes and then takes the selfie. It's a glorious moment played out in real time. Is a is a soap opera. Uh, played up before our eyes, uh, and I was wondering the 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 original of this going back to last season beating Man United five that is still available on the store as well, <laughs> uh, which is Fergie and Kenny, which is absolutely great. Uh, yes, they are available right now. Redmenmerch dot com. Uh, if you listen to this in podcast form, go and check out Redmenmerch dot com. Have a little snoop around because we've got some boss stuff on there for some of the new players, some of the old players, some of the legends, and of course, if you happen to work somewhere where you've got Evertonians or Manx around you, yeah, um, and you just want to casually sit back and have a little sip say nothing let the mug do your talking for you speaking of passive aggression if you're going to passive aggressive do it to someone's face that's what i'd say um that's the right kind of that's the right kind of at least they've got the right to reply they can call you a twat to your face uh, and you can just have another sip or shout at a play in your twat yeah yeah um right let's briefly talk then about um bournemouth uh steve plunk um yeah, I don't really want to get too into it because we've got a whole week of basking in Manchester United's defeat. But the next two games before the break, because obviously you know, the Fulham game's been moved because of the FA Cup uh, progression from them. And we've got something like a 17-day break of football after the Real Madrid game. But there's a chance with the way things have fallen. You know, Liverpool could go into that break. It's a big ask for a variety of reasons. We could go into that break in the top four and into the quarterfinals of the Champions League, huge ask, but that's what that's what the next two games are for Liverpool. Yeah, I think the fourth place one's more likely to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, just that, so. yeah, well, well <laughs> hell of a over time, wouldn't it? And the burn about that would eclipse. The, that's why he's the market manager. He makes sensible decisions. Yeah. 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 Like, we're booking fucking trips to Istanbul. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> Steady on, guys. Steady on. Fucking idiots. That's why we had to get him in. Yeah. He has a calm and influence. Yeah, I, I, I think. <laughs> You've ruined me with that one. Uh, yeah, I think I think the, the Bournemouth thing is is the big one, isn't it? Realistically, that's an opportunity to get into fourth place. We come back from the break, and then we've got the week from hell, so we need to make make yeah. it count um, now. And you know, they're in the bottom three. We need to go there. We need to focus. We need to get the the result. And we need to get the points on the board. It is a game that they're all must win games now. But it's a really cliched thing to say. You can't beat Man United at 7 0 at home and then go to Bournemouth and not get another three points. It kind of becomes pointless then, doesn't yeah. it? It's also makes sense. Yeah, again, no. I, I'm a, I don't really want to look too far there, but what we can look at is what that result from Man United did for the league and what the weekend as a whole. Now, we've got the Bias Football podcast later where we can look at our rivals. And, but like the fact that Spurs lose, Manchester City lose, and then we go and apps. Sorry, yeah, Newcastle. Newcastle get beaten by Manchester City, rather. And then we can go and absolutely wipe the floor with Man United. Mm. Tottenham and Newcastle will be like, oh no, ah, for fuck's sake, yep. you know for that they they've all been like almost. It's almost been like kind of forgot about. I think everyone's got kind of had Liverpool in the rearview mirror, mm-hmm. um, but we haven't done anything to justify like worrying them. You know what I mean? We, it it's a bit like. I, I don't want to spoil it anymore. It's the recent episode of The Last of Us, but like it keeps showing the door, and you think the fella's going to run through it, and he just never turns up for a while, and then eventually, like this fella comes. It's been a bit like that where it's we're just waiting for Liverpool, we're just waiting for Liverpool, and Eddie come, Eddie mm-hmm. come down the rails. Oh, and by the way, they're about to get all the good lads back fit again, and Eddie come, and he's done this before, and we've done this in the COVID season where you know Liverpool come down the rails and got there, and we've done it again last season where they went unbeaten for the entire second half of of the campaign in the league. Like, this is what they do. Yep. And 
so you're right. It starts. It starts with United, but Bournemouth. It's just it has to be a win because you can't. You just it just has to be. You can't. You can't afford. We, we, there's there's too many difficult games ahead of that for that mm. not to be. We have to win that. But I bet you Tottenham and Newcastle fans, in particular, and the, and the football club as a whole, are thinking, ah, fuck. It's these again. Yeah. These are coming now. These are coming now. And that that would be like. It's a bit like when we were top of the league, mate. The Man City were five points behind with a game in hand, and we'd drop a point and they'd win. Ah, f- here's these come now. Here's where they're going to take their chance. That's what they should be thinking. We need to just get a run of form. And I, I look, if Liverpool are a team that's going to finish fourth in the league, Dan, mm-hmm. we're not going to win every game between now and the end of the season. We're not. We're not. We're going to draw games and we're going to drop. We're going to lose games because that's what happens. Everyone stumbles, stumbles, trips, and you end up just about dragging yourself over the line at the end. However. If Liverpool are just one of those, are able to get themselves back to a proximity of the of the level they've been at in recent years, then they need. To, that's what I'm saying. We need to go and beat Bournemouth, and then put the pressure on everyone else and be that, be that like, just like heavy breathing, heavy running force. That's yeah. you know when like trying to run when someone's stomping behind you, mm-hmm. but having them look over the shoulders at every given moment. That's what Bournemouth will allow us allow us to do. Yeah, one hundred percent it will. I think as Steve's point is a good one. Is one I made a few weeks ago on the podcast, and when we kind of started to turn the corner a little bit, it started to turn the ship around. That teams who were sort of occupying our spots, if you like, Newcastle and Spurs in particular, would have been looking over their shoulders just a little bit and going, "Ah, Liverpool are getting their act together down there." That's slightly concerning. Yeah. And now all of a sudden that's a real concern for them. I think because we've gone course and distance at this a few times before you mentioned the COVID season and obviously the league, the times we've won the league or nearly won the league, we've got this in our locker. We've done it before. They haven't necessarily. It's like when Leicester were kind of occupying fourth spot forever in a day and then fell off a cliff at the end. Yeah. It feels to me that like that could happen again, but in our favour, obviously. And I think... So the psychological impact yesterday would have had on us in a positive sense for our morale. It might have also had a really negative one for United, by the way, and who knows what happens to their season from here on out. That's really interesting. Could well be capitulation. It happened in front of our very eyes yesterday when we dismantled them. But yeah, for me, Bournemouth already has the feel, I know it's only Monday, but it already has the feel of like an after the Lord Mayor show type yes. game because it is, Bournemouth, it is Bournemouth, Bournemouth away, it's an early kickoff. It doesn't feel, but that's exactly the sort of game we need to go there and get through by hook or by crook. It might not be flashy, it might not be fancy. Get the three points, get out of there, get off the south coast and get back up to Liverpool. I don't care how it looks anymore, just get away. It's also important there quick to say is that it's the it is the chance to go first, and if you be poor, if you be Bournemouth rather, Spurs are, are then playing Forest. Mm-hmm. Having Spurs do play Champions League this week as well, so they, they've got that to contend with. Um, it's a it's a finely balanced, finely balanced. They don't need more pressure either they, on that though. Newcastle then play don't Newcastle don't play till Sunday, and they play Wolves. You feel like they're starting to get their act together. So all of a sudden, you if you win and you are in that fourth position, you know, it, we would go to fourth and we could be both Spurs on goal difference, I would think. Yeah. Go with Spurs on goal difference and then go, right, it's over to you, Sam. We, we've done our yeah. bit. Out, out you go. What you don't want, because this is where the Eric can kill you, is if you go and you don't win and then they go, fucking hell, there's our chance, right? Go, yeah. Let's go. Let's get, let's, get that, let's get that game back. Let's get those points back and just, you know, let pull it down. Let's try and step on them a little bit. So if you can just go to Bournemouth and do your job, which let people should do, Bournemouth are terrible. And if you can go there and be be us and, and beat them and beat them well, it does automatically it says it puts a bit more pressure on two teams playing two teams who aren't clear of relegation. That um and actually Forest and, and Wolves are in relatively decent form for teams down the bottom of the table. So it, it is a it's a huge that, that's why the United game was so big because I was saying, you know, ten points from the four games that we'd had was was good. That was top four form. But you can make it better by going and winning the, those, you know, the, the, those little bonus ones. Because everyone was probably saying, maybe a draw is, isn't the end of the world. Whatever, no, just going to beat them. Yep. So there's three, there's a couple of bonus points there that those, those other teams were hoping we dropped and we didn't. The thing that's important about this, and we've got a comment in the Club Legend Discord from Titch Green saying, "Well, I was going to ask this anyway, but it's a good, because it's a good point." Um, Jurgen now has the option to cater the team to the game. Uh, he's not had that all season. Stefan Harvey in the team for the long haul. No need to burn through them now. Um, but I think that extends to the front three for this game as well. So today, obviously, it's a week. So, you know, half the squad could be out injured by then. You know what I mean? Because that's how the season's gone. Um, but with Real Madrid then looming in the midweek that follows, yeah. you could make two or three changes to that midfield and forward line and actually still be putting out a team that's more than capable of winning either of those games. 
Yeah, you could. Um, I certainly think we will in midfield. I don't think we need to sort of defensive midfielders against them because that's not their strength. Um, with regards to the front three, I, if it were my choice, I'd leave it to start with and try and win the game within the hour and then make the changes the 60-30 scenario. I think we need to put ourselves in the strongest position to win the game and then think about making the changes. If you go with Jota and Jota has a, another game where he's feeling his way back into form and it doesn't work for him, the last half an hour becomes a bit frenetic and then you start to panic a little bit and you feel uncomfortable. It, I've long been an advocate of win the games and then make the changes rather yeah. than do it the other way around. Yeah, it's interesting stuff though, isn't it, Dan, is that... Mm. You know, there's a potential world. I, I, I do, I do tend to agree with Steers that you want to put your best foot forward, but not entirely certain. You know, that this also the point is our best foot forward can look at a, a couple of different things. You know, we might decide that it is a, a, jot, a Jota style player will better suit. However, Bournemouth are playing. You know, mm. I, I don't know. Or again, you might be looking at it and going, well. Do we need Henderson and Fabinho in this one so Bacetic can come back into this one and that gives Fabinho? Because what I want for Real Madrid and a lot, we might write that off. You know what I mean? We might not go flat out, but having that break afterwards says to me that give yourself every opportunity there. So I want Henderson and Fabinho as with as much in the tank as possible because they're going to be pivotal to us winning the midfield battle in that one. Mm. But yeah, it's nice to be sat here debating these changes to approach and all that because we feel we can win two games or well, three games in a week as opposed to panicking yeah. over how we get one team up. Oh, absolutely. It's nice to have the options to call upon, isn't it? And to have these sort of conversations around who will be tactically suited better to that game than, oh, he's got to play because he's fit. It's like not last man standing territory anymore, is it? Like, And I actually, the Jota one's the interesting one. I actually do wonder whether this is a game you could get Jota back up and running for maybe for the rest of the season because it, to your point earlier on, Steve, if you do get Diogo Jota back firing all cylinders back, by some way, shape, or form between now and the end of the season, he could actually be pivotal for what we can achieve. So I do get that. However, I think I said it yesterday in the build-up show, I'd be tempted just to go all guns blazing for this next one, and then Real Madrid. He's not going to write Real Madrid off because it's just not in his mantra. It's not the way he goes about things, and I get that. And fully, what he'd probably be more likely to do is try and win the Bournemouth game within the hour, then make his changes and rest his lads, your Henderson, your Fabinho's, and also do something similar in the burnabout, almost give it a go for the hour and see where we're at and then assess from there. And if we're in the game great maybe go again yeah. double down on a couple of substitutions but if not sort of peel, peel your way back from the game then I mean, like what Eddie Howard did against Nugent when they went, they went down to 10 give it a go and we're like okay that's done exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, 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 yeah we get all the good lads but like you say the, the fact that we don't play the weekend after helps them with that because you can't just go right listen we're just going to smoke these two for the last game give them three or four days off on all these before they get, all have to go Jet it around the world to go and play. Uh, and none of the Brazilian lads got called up, by the way. Just yeah. on that. No, none of the Brazilian lads got called up. Well, to be fair, what's the fucking surprise? He's, he's been fucking yeah. useless. But should, maybe after yesterday, Fabinho might get a late call. I don't know. <laughs> but it's it's an interesting one looking at Ed. Like I say, this is the one where you talk about top four form and like you know the results where you can get away with losing and you can get away with winning. That. Like Bournemouth away has got to be a banker. You've got to, you've got to go. Well, and we say that, Steve, but I know you, you do have to. Okay, it's not. But, it's the, not, but, but the point it goes back to again: it's great winning at Anfield. We need to sort the way. This is yeah, this yeah. is what sorting the away form looks mm -hmm. like. Yeah. You need to take what you learn from Crystal Palace and go a bit better. The way that we learn, we took our learnings from Real Madrid and went better. I'm right saying it's three away on the it's three away now, it isn't is it? Now, it's, yeah. it's good. It's, it's Bournemouth, City, Chelsea, all away in our next three league yeah. games. Um, so yeah, you, 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 you to expect nine points from that. Um, it, to expect it is probably. I mean, you can, I'm hopeful of it, but you can't expect it. Oh, yeah. So you, you're expecting you want at least six, which means and the three of them just have to come up on. If they, they just have to, and then yeah, you go. I, I'd expect to be Chelsea actually to, if, if Super told the way. That City one's a big one where you, you don't want to go into that one chasing the result that you've just lost. You know yeah, what I mean? Th th if that makes sense, because um, anything can happen. The Etihad games between us and them, who knows how they how they can plan out? So yeah, it's a it's a. I, th I think the the way the weekend panned out, it's happened a couple of weekends now where we've had really good weekends where everyone seems to be dropping points on the Reds, just get the job done. Well, that's why, yeah, all of a sudden we've gone from 10th to we're knocking on the door of the top four yeah. with loads of games left to, left to be played. There's the best part of, what, 40 things, 39 points or something still to be played for. In terms of the form, guy, guy now over the last five or six games, like we're right at the top of it again, which is yeah. which is mad. Alisson's only a couple of games off the Golden Gloves again. Which is also mad. The, the clean sheets, which is, yeah, which is crazy. Cause it was four now, is it on the bounce? Five. Five, five clean bounce. sheets in the Premier League on the bounce. Like, yeah, things are starting to turn Liverpool's way. Like, it, the, the, you know, all of the... 
that the moves moves are just pointing towards the Reds. I, I bet now if you asked a lot of neutral fans who's going to come forth, I bet you a lot of fucking Liverpool. Yeah. I, I think a lot of them will do. Even, yeah. Just to say as well, we spoke, I think, last week or the week before in here about our home form being pivotal to what we can achieve in terms of the top four. And we've kind of, we've doubled down on that ourselves recently. Our results at home have been boss. It is the away form has been a major issue. But to your point, Paul, earlier on about your top four form doesn't need to be perfect. If we can just win all our home games, <laughs> now, like realistically, that mm-hmm. might well be enough and pick up the odd point here. And you're going to win games on the road. Yeah. But if we can just consistently win at Anfield, we probably get top four on the back of that. I get that. I think the next four games, more, the but... next four games changes your mentality a little bit in, with regards to what Steve said. You don't want to be going into three games after the break, which is as we know Chelsea, City, and Arsenal. Thinking actually, we dropped the bollock against Bournemouth. No, no, we need no, to recover no. some ground. So the Bournemouth game is a, is a win at all costs. Yeah, go and give a good account of yourself, at Real Madrid. Have the seventeen days off where you say, let's 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 think about it. Possibly six clean sheets in a row two points off maximum, go to the Real Madrid, give a really good account of ourselves. You're setting yourself up then for what is the hardest week of the season, yeah. where I agree, uh, Chelsea is a game we should be targeting the victory. I, I want to be sat here on Mon- next Monday being able to go better than as possible. Bring him on. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the only way we can do that is if we if we carry a pos- another positive result at yeah, the weekend. Absolutely. And I don't think we're, we're going to do it, but... It's hope is what it's all about. If you haven't got hope as a football fan, what's the point? I just give it off. Generally, what's the point? Um, yeah, we had loads of super chats. I apologise, we had some tech issues trying to get them up on the screens. So I've got one, the most recent one is from Robin Hood. Uh, Four ninety nine. Thank you so much, Robin. Uh, really enjoyed the Bobby Firmino testimonial yesterday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's good. Um, and there's a bunch which I'll read. I'll just read through. We can't get these up on screen, unfortunately. But. Um, uh, Liam Bento has been a member for 25 months here on YouTube. Says my favourite content is United stand fans claiming that their players are tired, like Liverpool didn't take it to the final day of every comp last year, and also play last weekend and midweek and then into this game the same as United did as well. Yeah, uh, Martin Walls. Um, difference was we have leaders; they don't. Great point, by the way. Mm. <laughs> really good point. Their leader was a fucking rat who jibbed it. Yeah. yeah, Henderson had by example where <laughs> Bruno, yeah, couldn't be asked. Uh, Halle Madrid, and I want everyone to remember this comment, by the way, says it's funny how you can never beat us, Halle Madrid. Um, okay. All right, Eric. Interesting. People, yeah, so. people saying stuff before the bug game doesn't often come back to bite them on the arse, so yeah, that's fine. And, and there's no there's no <laughs> form for Real Madrid get, giving it to Billy Biggin before a, before the <laughs> Real Madrid game as well. Yeah. Like, in there, so. um, all, all comments like that should be made to read Sergio Busquets' last Yeah, they be, should. Yeah. <laughs> Marley Clark says, imagine being Harvey 7-0 over the Manx. Come on, Reds. Absolutely. Uh, Will Smith asks the question, why can't we ever beat Real Madrid, though? Yeah, exactly. Well, across um, that bridge where we get to, it should be my eyes, 7-0. Yeah. Fucking shut up. Ashby, uh, <laughs> I'm loving how salty United fans are. Mr. Housen calling it our cup final whilst looking like he's had the worst day of his life warm my heart I know <laughs> seeing Steve House and, and I have friends before I, 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 me and Steve have got a good relationship he's, a good, he's, a, he's a, actually a good fella when he, we're not talking about Liverpool and Man United uh, but seeing him upset because he's the mm. ultimate face of the Manx like Adam McCola you know you know, I, I, you know I, we have got, I've got a similar relationship better relationship with Adam Goldberg similarly the fact that House is a Manx makes it all the sweeter because we're just too diametrically opposed peoples the Manx and the Scouts are so seeing upset Manx in that regard oh, yes. might as well be Celtic yeah uh, yeah um, yeah brilliant stuff uh, right okay just quickly before we head off we have got the Bias Football podcast to come immediately after this on redmenplus.com uh, we are going to be looking at some of the action from the weekend we're going to be talking Arsenal's last gasp winner uh, we're going to talk about Man City really giving it their all in the title race and how that's pro- probably given them both loads of stress, which is kind of nice watching other people go through that, not us, although I'd quite rather it be us. Um, we're going to have a laugh at Everton, uh, drawing to Nottingham Forest, um, not because it, there's any shame in not beating them Nottingham Forest at their, at their ground. The um, fortress that is. Fortress. The <laughs> <laughs> um, last day since September, to be fair. Yeah, I think be more that it, it is funny because, you know, 
the balance of the draws. If you if you don't if you concede the last goal, then mm. you've basically lost, haven't you? Um, we're gonna have a little laugh again at Chelsea Football Club and probably Spurs as well and all that good stuff. So come and join us over there. We've got a code for you guys. Uh, if you want to go to redmenplus.com, click join today. Uh, click monthly club captain subscription and use the code biased B I A. S E D all caps. Uh, what is the offer, Steve Hall? Well, we'll play. I thought you were going to give us something away then. Um, if you sign up, yeah, you will get uh, three pound off a month for the first three months. So basically, you'll pay two quid a month. Two quid a month for three months. Get yourselves involved. So yeah, code biased. Redman plus monthly club captain, and yeah, two quid a month for the first three months. Bargain, bargain. It's less. It's it's more than half price. Well, effectively, you're getting that show for fifty p, but you're not because if you divide the damn amount by all the shows, you're getting it for like zero, zero, zero point one pence or whatever. But in reality, if you just want the biased football show, which is an extension of this podcast, where those talk about Premier League stuff, effectively that's how it works out. So yeah, use the code biased, get a huge discount on your Redman Plus subscription, and also fill your boots on Boss Liverpool post match content. We've got the instant match reaction. We've got the final word and the In The Ground podcast. Three shows all there to just revel in the mank salty tears. <laughs> oh, oh, great stuff. Um, I feel so happy today, Paul. It's so good. It's funny, isn't it? It's so good. Are your mood changes? Yeah. yeah. Right. That is it from us. Uh, as I say, plenty more post-Liverpool United content. If you want more, we've got you covered. Uh, do go and check it out. Other than that, have a wonderful week, everyone. And we're back with another Red Men Originals podcast, hopefully uh, with all our plans for how we're going to beat Real Madrid next week. <laughs> Bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching that show. Did you know if you go over to redmenplus.com and sign up as a Club Legend subscriber, you will get access to our amazing Discord chat, 20% off merchandise, live tickets every year for free, plus all our incredible content, and you'll get absolutely everything right as it happens. So get over there and do it.